It's Manila Day, and that's the American ambassador. And there's a very high police presence, as you would imagine. Uh, the US ambassadors here, the Australian ambassadors here, Canadian, uh, no Japanese. And because I didn't have any forewarning, I'm not dressed formally enough to be able to go in to the actual lunch, but we're allowed to go into the function itself. And I'm with Alex. Hi. Alex from the U Hotel. He's taking me around. We're going to meet a councillor from the Manila City Council. And then he's going to take us on a food tour of Binondo. But first, we'll just hang around the Intramuros for a while. The battle for Manila, as some of you may not know, uh, was fought at the end of the Second World War by a combination of mainly US and Filipino troops to try to get the Japanese out of Manila. Uh, over a hundred thousand Filipino people were slaughtered by the Japanese and uh, many other thousands of soldiers lost their lives and Manila was decimated but they managed to rout the Japanese and get them out of the Philippines. So it may come as no surprise to you that the function today is being held at the Museo di Intramuros. Australian troops were involved in the Battle of Manila and did fight in the Philippines during the Second World War. And because of that, there's a large Australian contingency here, from the ambassador to various military attaches uh, being represented here at this uh, 79th anniversary of the Battle of Manila at the Museo de Intramuros. All right, the breakfast function is over, and this here is Councillor Tor. Hi, guys. Thank you for this. He is going to take us on a bit of a food tour of Binondo. But just a little bit of background information. He's a councillor with the Manila City Council, and his great, 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 great grandfather was the first ambassador, the first Filipino ambassador to Australia. Yes, he was, uh, Heriberto Zarcal was uh, the uh, ambassador of the Philippines to Australia. All right, we're going. Well, we're in Binondo now, and I seem to be with half the ward city councillors. Uh, from Manila City Council for the Binondo area uh, and so we're going to go exploring and see what we can find. We've just made it to Engbi Tin yeah. and uh, we've, the there's owner also, is going to show us around. Sorry, There's a restaurant in the corner, you see the line? Yep. It starts here. Hi guys, it's me again, Councillor Tho. We are here with Boss Royce, uh, the owner of uh, Engbi Tin, one of the establishments that have been legendary and well-known here in the city of Manila. It's very nice to meet you, Sir Royce. Thank you, thank you for coming over. Uh, we're very glad to have you here. And Welcome to the oldest Chinatown in the room. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really looking forward to uh, a couple of um, treats. Oh yeah, we'll have lots of them for you. All right, Hope fantastic. Yeah, enjoying lots of them. Oh boy, it's busy in here. Now, Royce, Sir Royce has uh, something to show us. This is called a decoy. Yes, this is a decoy. It's a glutinous rice cake. Um, this is actually preferred by Filipinos because of three things that it symbolizes. First of it being sweet, so you're sweet to your family and friends the whole year round. Second, it being round, it signifies like uh, money and you know no, no corners means no problems. Yep. And third, it being sticky, so hopefully uh, you know good luck will stick to you the whole year yep. and you go get closer to your family and friends as yeah, well. Yeah, right. So the family that eats the sticky cake sticks together. Oh, 
what's the history of this one, Rice? So, Hokkien Ube was the first ever modern flavor of Hokkien, and Engiting was the first one to, to introduce it to the market. Uh -huh. We invented Hokkien Ube. So this is U Ube flavor? I let you try and you be the judge. Alright. We're actually very popular for this one. Oh, it's delicious. I love Hokkien. It's a kind of dry biscuit on the outside with stacks of flavor and filling. And what we what, what's different about ours is we we have very thick like paper thin like crust. It is very thin, isn't yeah, it? It is. Yeah sometimes you can get a, a very thick crust and it becomes a little bit dry. Mm. Oh. oh Oh boy, it's crazy busy here because Chinese New Year is coming up. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming over and come come by anytime. Give me a call. Oh, I will for sure. And Royce has got a really, really interesting family history. This whole business is, it's just extraordinary what's happened over the last 110 years here. And uh, maybe sometime in the future I'll come back and we can have a longer tour. Sure. We'll be very happy to host you. Well, that'll be fantastic. And thank you for my little bag of goodies and uh, I'll see you soon. See you soon. Well, the councillors have kindly brought me here to Toho Restaurant, which claims to be the oldest restaurant in the Philippines. I just heard some Australian accents, and I want to find out why tourists are coming here. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Oh, my name is May. May. This is my husband. So. And, and so why have you come here? Well, I think um, we want to learn about the culture and history of um, the Philippines and Manila. And so we wanted to sort of try some local delicacies and we were told, uh, tour guide, this is the oldest restaurant in the Philippines. It's, yeah. in, the, it's in Chinatown, so you've got to come here. And we're yeah. like, all right, take right. us to it. All right, thanks for that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Councillors have kindly brought me down to the oldest restaurant in the Philippines, Doho Panceteria, which means noodles. Uh, and uh, the first person is Councillor Philip. Hi. Thank you very much. Hello. And then Councillor Terence. Hi, come visit us here in the Philippines. <laughs> and Councillor Tall, who you've met before. And of course, I'm with Sir Alex from the U Hotel. Hi. Uh, what have we ordered? We ordered the famous uh, uh, pork lechon and the asado pork. Yes. Oh, okay. Two or three? Two different types of pork. Yeah, we, yes. we, we also have a soup. The hot dog thai soup, the one with the egg. And, oh, okay. uh, we ordered the uh, fried rice and the uh, lumpiang Shanghai and uh, the most uh, the specialty here, the spicy squid. Oh, not spicy a lot. squid? <laughs> no, not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> Fried lumpia with pork and, uh, and a sort of sweet and sour tomato sauce. Oh, that's good. This squid is fantastic. This um, <laughs> asado pork or the chow su, Chinese style pork. It's just delicious. It's really tender. I was just talking to the owner about it. You generally don't use pork shoulder, but he's using pork collar, uh, which is a bit more tender. It's marinated for 36 hours, and then it's slow char grilled for two hours. And it's tender and delicious.